All right, so today we're going to find the slope from a graph, and we're going to find the slope from a chart or a table. If your homework is there, it's due to class from now, which would make it on Tuesday, uh, provided that we don't have a hurricane to worry about. Okay, let's get started. Now we find... So if we wanted to find the slope from this graph, what we're going to do is we're going to look up and down the line, and we're going to try places where the grid meets a grid. So for example, if we look, we might see one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk our eye up the line until we find a place where the grid and the line all meet at the same place. Okay? It's always a good idea to go for your right by going a little bit further and trying to see what. So, now, if you look at those dots, you'll notice, first of all, that they're all going to be evenly spaced apart, okay? That's an important feature of, of finding the slope, because if your points aren't evenly spaced, chances are you've picked a bad point, okay? Now, are we dealing with run over rise or rise over run? Ooh. Ooh. Rise over run. We associate with slope. You guys remember? Y equals something, something plus something. M. And so, I see better. M. Very good. Oh, let me ask you something. Is the rise going up, the rise goes up and down, right? Is that X or is that Y? The Y, okay. So the Y all over the X. How much the Y changes, right? How much is it going up? And we use and the change in Y. And the change in F. Okay? The change in Y and the change in X. That's what that little triangle means. It's a lowercase Greek letter delta. They chose that because it means the difference. Okay? How much does it change? Hmm? Delta. D is in delta. But it's the difference. How much has it changed? Okay. All right. Do it. You're going to walk from left to right. Okay. You're going to go from dot to dot. Much the same way that, you know, you would drive along a city a city road. You would go grid lines from one dot to the next. So we're going to go up one. Is that my, my run? My ride. Good. three, and that's my, which, that's the run. So I have a rise of one, and I have a run of, eight. okay, so my slope is going to be one over three. You good? You're always going to go from left to right, okay, a lot easier, and you're always going to do the run last. You can do the rise first and then the run. Okay? All right. 
So, let's do another one. You guys have paper? That's fine. I'll give you but use your homework. Do it for your homework. The ruler, they're up in bucket. All right. So. We're going to walk our eye down this line until we find a, until we find a good dot. Got a good dot? No, why is it not a good dot? It's not intersecting the up the, the grid in both places, you know, left and up and down. So let's move it until we can find a good spot. All right, let's move it. A good spot? All right, good. Let's find another one. I'll walk my hand. I want you to all yell out so we can hear it on the recording. When... I should put my hand down to make another dot. Okay. Okay, that's right there. Let's do that again. Tell me when. went down, right? So is that a positive 2 or a negative 2? Right, it's a negative 2, and you can tell if it's negative because it's going towards the negative number, right? The negative numbers are going, are down below, right? A positive 3 or a negative 3? Positive 3 because I'm going towards the positives, right? So is this negative 2 over 3, or is this 3 over negative 2? Right. We have a rise of negative 2 and a run of 3. Does that make sense? All right. Now, let's try this for a second. Let's say I missed I didn't see it. Maybe my eye just skipped over it. Totally okay, not a problem. You may not see every dot. Okay, all right. So let's try. So all right. Four? Negative four. negative six positive six good so my slope here is negative four over six but wait is this a problem I thought that my slope was negative two over three I can simplify it and when I simplify negative four over six what do I get oh okay. good this make sense Are we good to go we how this is going all right, now let me ask you something. Looking at the line, forget about any of the numbers that are on the screen. Just looking at the line, is that a positive slope or a negative slope? Negative slope. What you can tell is if you try to write your name on it. If I try my name on it, you would see that you're writing it down. That's a negative slope. And 
it came out to be a negative number. So we have a we have a negative picture and we have a negative number. Okay? And here we had a is that a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive slope. Good. So we have a positive picture, picture of a positive slope, and we have a positive number, one third. Okay? If you should be able to kind of tell if you've kind of done this right, or at least have the right idea going, if your number is positive and your picture is positive, your number is negative and your picture is negative. All right. Now, let's. I need a volunteer. Why? Oh, wow, well, okay. Go on up here and give me some dots. Come on, you can do this. Come on, Jalen. You'll do the next one. <laughs> All right, let's see if let's let's have let's have our, our our wonderful volunteer put dots on this graph where the Do we agree with that dot? Kind of hidden behind that. Hold Put those dots. Okay, can I get a round of? Okay, we had better get what? There was a positive number or a negative number for? We should get. How do we know that we're going to get a positive number? Because it's going up. It's a positive slope. Very good. Excellent. So my next volunteer, thank you, Ernie. Go on up there and yes, and and draw me my my, uh, my marks to go from one dot to the other dot. How far up is he going to have to go, gentlemen? How far up? Right, three and four there, if you don't mind. Okay, so four over three or three over four? Three over four, very good. Okay, now, by the way, just as a piece of advice, sometimes a dot might look like it lands on a grid, but it could be off by a tiny little bit, okay? So, for example, what I say is, if you can draw more than one dot, you should. I'm not going to draw axes on these, but I want you to follow along with me for a second. Because sometimes it's, uh, it's, it, it, they can be tricky. Because sometimes it's, it's close to being on a grid mark, but it's not. All right. So, for example, right here, that's a dot. You all agree? Okay. Now, 
pen. Okay. All right. Maybe, maybe it isn't. But here's how we can check. Ladies and gentlemen, here's how we can check. Let's draw another dot. If my dots are not equally spaced, then we have a problem. Okay? It almost does. It was. Let's just say it's so close you can tell. And let's just, we want it to be short. Okay? Here's what you could do. If I'm, if I'm correct, and I follow that pattern, down one, over two, down one, over two, down one, over two, I had better land on dots every single time. Let's see if the pattern fits. Over two. See, it does, it's off. And then down one over two, it's even off. See what I mean? So this is a way for you to say, well, wait a minute. Is that really a dot? Is that really right? And if it is, then your pattern will be the same every time, and it will work all the time. But if your pattern breaks down and it makes it worse, you probably have a bad dot somewhere. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I believe... Find out if it's a red dot, the second one, in like the middle of the screen, if that's a red dot. So, go and find the slope from one red dot to the other red dot, and let's follow that pattern to see if it's right. So, very much. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Oh, please don't break my equipment. You are so lucky that I'm recording this one. Okay. So is my slope over negative three or three, uh, negative three over seven? What's my slope? Negative over seven. You aren't the school ruler. They're not. No, just, just don't break the next one I give you. How about this? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you see, it does actually land on another dot. So this is. Are we cool? All right. So let's do it. Let's do it in reverse. Let's see. Okay. So if I'm going to go from say this dot to this dot, okay. If we're going to go from right to left, which honestly I see more students make errors doing it this way. But if if, if this is the way that it works, this is the way that it works. So we're going to go one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Is that a positive seven or a negative seven? Negative, because I'm going towards the negatives, aren't I? Right? That's the negative seven. Two, three. So negative three or positive three? Positive three because I'm going up. And now my slope is three over negative seven, which is the same as negative three. So it doesn't matter what direction you go in, you just have to keep track of your signs. 
Okay. And remember, at the end of the day, you should be able to ask yourself, well, you know, is my slope supposed to be a negative number or is my slope supposed to be a positive number? And you can tell that by looking at the picture. Does that make sense? Okay. Are we good? Under control? Fantastic. Take a look at the page that's Make sure that everybody knows themselves into. One seven six 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 eleven times sixteen. Twenty two times eight. This in seventeen. I'm going to pause the. So, the slope from a chart. Okay, so how to find the slope from a chart or a table? Because you have, I think, four questions that are like this, right? Both of these tasks are done the same way. I'm going to ask the second question, because it's pretty straightforward, and then I'm going to show you how to do it, which will answer the What An equation is linear if the slope stays the same forever. slope changes, then you're not a straight line. Okay? So in this process, we're going to find the slope in the chart. That's the first. But if that slope changes, that kind of makes sense. If your slope goes like this, and then later on it goes like that, it's not a straight line, is it? No. So the slope of the line has to be the same forever, and that's linear. Okay. Has this copy because we're about to go into it. We're good? Fantastic. Whatever's spraying, whatever scented thing there is, please don't do that in a closed environment. That means all of us. So, why change it? Up to, right? Still up to. Up to. Okay, so this is the change in the Y. What symbol do we use for... What symbol do we use to say change in... Yeah, what does it look like? 
looks like a little triangle, right. And Y right there. Okay? How much is the X changing? Delta X. Or change in X. Now, what do you think we should do to make the slope at this point? Why did you choose the 2 over the 3 and not the 3 over the 2? Y goes over X. Very good. Slope is Y over X. And since there are over three. You can't reduce the fraction, we're done. Okay? Now let me ask you, is this linear? How, what was the rule that we said before in order for it to be linear, The what happens to the slope? It does. Right. So my slope doesn't change anywhere, does it? Right? So is this a straight line? Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. Let's try another one. Hey, let's do this one. So, let's do the X's this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are those values. Okay, we good? Okay, right, let's do the same thing. Negative, how much? How far? Negative four. Okay, we see how we did all those? We put on all that, we just subtracted to find out how far we are. Okay, okay so let's... So here, is it negative three or three over negative two? ones are these? This is delta who? Of the y. These are y. How did I get those numbers? Um, because rise is up and down, right? And Y is your up and down. How did I get these red numbers? Oh, it's it, the rise is always Y. Well, yeah, and the run is always X. Put them together. Negative 2 over 3. What about my next one? What's my next one going to be? Wait a minute, negative 4 over 6, does that mean that I, are they the, are they the slope? Thank you. What happens when I simplify it? Negative 2 over. All right. Next one is going to be negative 1 over what? Which reduces to? You should 
reduce your fraction. Always, always, always reduce your fraction. Is it? It's linear. Right. So this is linear because my slope did. Page 176. Sense. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's do how far? Negative one. Very good. The signs are important, people. Negative three. And good with all those numbers. We see where all those numbers came from. Okay. Down. Am I getting, am I growing or am I shrinking? Yeah, from negative eight to negative four. So let's put together my slope. So my slope here is what over what? It's my slope for the first one. The next one. Negative three over. Wait a minute. Well, I'm sorry. I thought I heard. Okay. Negative three all over 12. And what does that reduce to? So am I still good? So far. Okay, let's keep going. Negative 3 all over 16. Oh, wait. Is that reduced? Is that reduced? No. So that doesn't reduce. That's not the same. So is this linear? No. This is not a linear. You can't tell me what the slope is because it changes sometimes. Okay, are we good? All right. Any questions? All right. This episode of The Ronco Show has been brought to you by Delta X and Delta Y.